So I wanted to make a quick video to help you learn the Souvenir de Sarasate by William Podstock. And just a few practice tips and suggestions for some of the tricky bits here and there. We won't be doing every single measure in the whole piece. Um, so at the beginning, if you'll notice, the seven note slur is a D major arpeggio. So I would start by just playing those seven notes forwards and back a few times without any slurs. So you can play around with that until that feels easy. Then when you're ready to add the slurs, you want to start right at the tip and do use very small bows for the 16th notes to save most of the bow for the last eighth note that's on the sport sando. And it's always a good idea when you have lots of 16th notes in a large slur to put staccato bites. So that's what you'll do first. Place at the tip with bites. Saving most of the bow for the top D. And then to get really comfortable with those, I would play the first note long, and then the second, and then the third, etc. I'm just going to demonstrate, and then you could pause the video and try each one uh, several times until it feels easy. taking out the staccato bites. And every time you put your bow at the tip, try to place it quietly before uh, each one. Then the next section, uh, just take a little bit of extra space uh, after each up bow eighth note to place the bow carefully um, for each down bow triplet. Feeling very relaxed between the triplet down bow and the up bow staccato. starting in measure four, um, it's a good idea to practice them with some cole uh, finger work first to get some finger flexibility so when you go to play them the staccatos don't sound too spiky and short that they still, even though they're staccato, they have some nice length to them. So cole on, uh, not lifting the bow off the string, fingers only. feels really easy and your fingers feel very flexible um, and then collate off slow. So here the arm is helping lift the bow off the string. one to get comfortable but after you've done that it'll be really easy to play it as written. And then that's the same. Then we have measure nine. Notice that is a E major arpeggio so that would be good to play forwards and backwards a few times. the heart. 
harmonic. For the harmonics, you want to use a lot of pressure, bow speed, and close to the bridge to make them um, ring nicely. <laughs> So the left hand pizzicato in measure 10, you want to do it at the tip and stay at the tip so that when you do your D major arpeggio, you're in the uh, right part of the bow for that. So just little flicks. Uh, you won't want the bow to sound like plucks too, so it's very short. You could just try a few open strings. So you're just dropping the bow, and as soon as it hit the string, you do a very short up bow, kind of a little flick with the wrist. And you could just practice a couple notes at first. The plucking, you're pulling the left third finger to the right. And then place quietly. And then that's all the same. The next part that's different is measure 17 double stops, I would notice um, which notes are on the top two strings, which notes are on the middle, and which notes are on the bottom, taking a little break in between each of those groupings. So the E and the A string wise, do that a few times. Then we only have two on the middle two strings, and two on the bottom. And then when you put it all together, you can practice it forwards and backwards. When you do the backwards, you could do the groupings as well. So the bottom two, middle two. two notes are harmonics, but that's what they're going to sound like. And for measure 19, uh, these double stops are really quite challenging. You want to keep your left hand very relaxed. If you can add a little bit of vibrato to the double stops, that actually helps keep the left hand relaxed and will help with the micro um, uh, changes you have to do to have good intonation on the double stops. So at first I would do, take small sections and practice them forward and backwards. So the first four notes, no slurs, forwards and backwards a few times. And then the same thing with slurs with staccato bites. just playing the bottom notes. And after that, it should feel really comfortable to play those two measures. Um, and it's all quite repetitive, so I think we can jump over 
to the, the next tricky part is measure 43. So there's two different ways you can bow measure uh, 43. The printed bowing, you, you want the, um, the Arco staccatos to be very short, um, but you can play them at all in the lower part of the bow with the bowing that's in the music. Because you want to be in the lower half for measure 44. So uh, is to do all up bows starting at the tip and just to gradually on each um, up bow to get closer to the frog. So again, you're in the right part of the bow for 44. You want to be in the lower half. So you would start at the tip. Thanks for watching.